Good morning. We are honored to be here in the Treaty 7 territory. I'm from Muscatees and work with Wolf Creek School Division. And it, it has come a long way uh, since I started working there. Back home, our ancestors uh, told us this time of the year is a new year for us. New growth, new beginning, new learning. I hate all I wanted to say. Good morning. Again, thank you very much for the warm welcome we received. We wanted to acknowledge that we are from Treaty 6 land, and there are a lot of us that are here today, and I'm very grateful to have so much support. It speaks to the dedication and the commitment that we have to our First Nation Métis and Inuit students in Wolf Creek Public Schools. So thank you, because I know it's a, a crazy busy month in May, but all of these individuals made arrangements with family and work to be here, so thank you. Our journey has been an interesting journey that started a few years ago when we joined the pilot project, and Lois Spate and I were the, the two people here at the very beginning, probably about, I guess it was three years ago we attended the spring gathering, and we were embarrassed that we hadn't been doing more for our students, and we were a bit intimidated because we didn't know what to do and where to start. So from there, we decided that we would move forward, but we needed to have a framework. Today, what we'd like to do is to share that framework with you and talk to you a little bit about what our division has done, division-wide, but also speak to you about our schools and highlighting three Pinoka schools in particular, the Pinoka Elementary, the Pinoka Secondary Campus, and the Pinoka Outreach School. Our mission statement is to create success for all learners, but we weren't doing that. Our First Nation Métis and Inuit students were not successful and our accountability pillar survey results demonstrated that. We needed to come up with a structure, a framework that we could put in place that would meet the needs of students. Finding our way. I'm just going to throw this out there. We have three gentlemen looking at a map that refused to ask for directions. It's a wonder we even found our way. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen. Before we began, we really felt that it was important that we access the knowledge of our elder, and we approached Joseph and asked him, how do we begin? How do we move forward? And Joseph said, the first thing that we need to do is have a ceremony in which we travel to all four points of our district, and we offer protocol. We have tobacco and broadcloth that we laid down, and we did a ceremony, and it was an amazing ceremony. And the purpose of that was to protect our students and our staff and our parents, and also to move this strategy forward, to move us forward to a point where we're meeting the needs of our students. This has become a moral imperative for Wolf Creek Public Schools, and this is a quote from Russell Bishop that I continually say every time I meet with staff. Why are we coming from a Eurocentric viewpoint when we be could be coming from a First Nation Métis and Inuit viewpoint when planning for our students? It works for all students. We read through a number of guiding documents before we began our journey, and we really tried to figure out where do we start. We had all this information, but how do we make a difference, and how do we ensure that our students' needs are met? And the first thing that we needed to do was to connect with the pilot project, because that was a strategy that allowed us to create professional development for staff. Our three areas of focus are the same as the project. We wanted to build educator capacity. We wanted to engage our learners, and we wanted to make sure we were creating paths for success. The first area that we needed to work with was building educator capacity. If we wanted to change anything, it had to happen in the classroom, and it had to be support for our teachers. I'm Lorna Hewson, and I'm a coordinator with Inclusive Learning Services at Wolf Creek. One of our key pieces as we look forward is really being intentional about the people that we have working in our buildings, also the structures and supports that we have. Sheila, who is our First Nations Métis Inuit Student Success Coordinator, is very critical to all of the work that has been happening in Wolf Creek. She works in all of our Pinoka schools, developing very significant relationships with all of our students and staff, our EAs, our administrators, but she also works with our surrounding communities as well, creating very strong relationships with those people, with all of our people. 
And Sheila has been uh, critical in developing school programs, small group programs, but also working with individual students as well, supporting them and advocating for, for all of them. Sheila also works very closely with our Elder Joseph. And I'm going to let Sheila come and talk a little bit about Elder Joseph. We are so fortunate in Wolf Creek Public Schools to have Elder Joseph Deschamps with us. The magic that happens when he meets with students, regardless of whether they are First Nation, Métis, or Inuit, or non, it is a magical moment. The connect is huge. And I just want to extend an acknowledgement and a thank you to Joseph for all of the hard work and the, the greatness that he brings to the lives of our students and our staff on a daily basis. To start off with, we needed to figure out a plan. Where do we begin with professional development? How do we even know where we're at? So I met with each of the three Pinoka admin teams and we created a capacity, build, capacity indicator tool. And that was something that Solange and I had worked on in the summer. What we wanted to do is we wanted them to identify based on the four guiding questions of learning to be, learning to know, learning to do, and learning to relate, where are we at? And the Pinoka Elementary School and the secondary campus and the outreach all had an opportunity to identify where they felt we needed to start. From there, we had put together a strategic plan. If you needed to work on the area of learning to be, these are all of the professional development activities that we can help facilitate in your school. And that's how we began our journey. I have to share an interesting comment with Lois had last night. She said, oh my goodness, we're so low. Why are we so low? But I said, look at the growth you've had throughout the year. The second part is we needed to make sure that we had a website and we had resources available because we needed to meet teachers where they're at. Teachers are continually saying, what do you have? I can't find any resources. Can you, can you give me something? Where do I begin? And this was an opportunity for us to work at creating a website and to connect the website to the Moodle, which allowed our teachers instant access to resources. We also worked with Learning Supports, part of our division, in the Literacy Initiative last year, and we introduced the work of Priscilla George. She's also known as the Rainbow Lady. And she talks about literacy from a First Nation, Métis, and Inuit viewpoint, and how we need to meet the needs of children. And with literacy, it looks a little bit different for our First Nation, Métis, and Inuit students. Wolf Creek has worked very intentionally to uh, at that design, universal design for learning and really being able to design to the edges. We have created um, the excellent learning environments for all students, beginning at that, that critical piece for everyone. And then continuing on with a collaborative response model that ensures that all staff are able to collaborate and work together to meet the needs of all of our students. We also have social workers, school social workers, in each one of our schools across the division. We have inclusion coaches in each one of our schools, and all of our supports are articulated through a pyramid of interventions. We also work very closely and are very much a part of our local or regional RCSD, and we, at this point, are working on the expansion to our First Nations with, through that RCSD. The next step we took was to create a First Nation, Métis, and Inuit task force cohort. And that consists of teachers from the three Pinoka schools, an administrator, inclusion coach, learning coaches, and a social worker. Our hope was to really ensure that our focus with, their, with this group is to build educator capacity. Our meetings consist of three areas. We focus on the history of the First Nation people in Treaty 6 area specifically. We focus on the cultural teachings from our elders and from community members that join us. And we also focus on instructional strategies. What do we need to do better in the classroom? Shelia? Hi, I'm Shelia Strykolsky from the Panoka Outreach School. I'm one of the members on the task force. Mostly I just want to talk about how great of an experience it has been, even though we have Joey in our school as uh, the elder program, the task force allows us to really dig in to learn more from him and some of the guests that Sheila and Joey bring in. 
gives that opportunity just to really find out more information, which I really enjoy, including some of our students. Sometimes we don't get to talk about those same kinds of things on a day-to-day on our classrooms, so it's been nice in the task force to get their perspective on what we're doing well for FNMI in our school or what we should do more of. And I really like that at the end of it, we always bring it back to all of us teachers kind of brainstorming together. What are you doing in your schools? What could we do differently? How can I learn from you? How can I help? And I really appreciate that because we're all in it for our kids together, so. This year, we have also joined together with a partnership agreement with Montana First Nation. We've learned a long time ago that we can't do this by ourselves. And what we can offer Montana First Nation is doing a better job at transitioning their students when they come into our school. Oftentimes, they come to us when they are going into grade 10. And it's a huge adjustment for them. And so we've promised that we're going to do a better job on the transition. We're also going to help out with professional development. And we're going to share back and forth collaboration related to a number of items, including RCSD. One area of the partnership agreement that we feel we can benefit from with Montana First Nation is a cultural component. That's an area that we just don't have. We don't have Cree classes. We don't have the language. We have sort of a band-aid right now where we've brought in a number of parents and a number of community members to teach Cree, but we need to formalize that in Montana First Nation. They're going to help us do that. So that's an exciting opportunity for us to actually work together with Montana First Nation. Good morning, I'm Lois Spate and I'm principal of Pinoak Elementary School and it's really been my privilege to be part of the spring gathering for the last three years. So in terms of building educator capacity at Pinoak Elementary School, we've had a number of professional development activities for our staff, everything from participating in a sweat to um, some activities that have been facilitated by Solange. So one of the ones that was very impactful for our team at our school was um, participating in the brain architectural game. Previous to Solange coming, we had Dr. Gibbs speak to us about um, early learning and the brain. And then when Solange facilitated the brain architectural game, it had a profound impact on our teachers. They saw how through the simulation, those early learning experiences that children have through the cards that they're dealt has an effect on the development of the brain. And after that activity, teachers really began to see the child. And the conversations that happened after that activity were amazing. We also um, are going to be having this week a couple of other activities. We are going to do the simulation of the blanket activity and then we're going to get on a bus and we're going to have a professional development activity of a field trip heading out to our neighboring community of Muscatchees and we're going to visit Montana School as well as Samson and then we're going to um, have a little lunch at the Nipsey's Cafe. One of our staff members, and not just one, but a number, because of these activities, have been so motivated to learn more. And so using her professional development money, one of our teachers took part just a week ago in a cultural camp in Jasper and came back very motivated to learn more and share her experiences with the rest of us, as well as with the task force. We've been trying to model some of the um, strategies that teachers can use in their classroom during our professional development activities. So having a talking circle um, as our formation during our professional development days has been key. I've seen that now taking place in a number of classrooms. We had an unconference at one of our professional development days and if you've ever participated in an unconference it's quite the experience and so it's very self-directed professional development and so a number of different topics were thrown out on the table but one of the most powerful ones that day was a talking circle where our teachers got together and shared a professional conversation or dialogue around First Nation, Métis, Inuit education. So those are just a few of the highlights of things at Pinoak Elementary. Hi there, uh, my name is Kathy McTaggart. I'm the Vice Principal of Pinoak Secondary Campus. So Lois spoke of a lot of things that we are also doing in our school, so I will just speak about one more. We had the opportunity, Sheila 
had a student uh, videotape herself and she talked about her story and her journey through her five years at our school. And I would say that got to a ton of our staff that weren't maybe really having a true understanding when she spoke and she spoke very frankly and honestly on that videotape that really really got to our staff so I have lots of other things to say but Lois spoke to lots of them so. <laughs> Good morning I'm Erin Frederick I'm one of the teachers at Pinoca Reach School and as these other ladies have said, we've done a lot of the same things, uh, lots of work with Solange. We also just did the brain game with her. Um, one of the most powerful things that we did as a staff is the suicide training that we did with young spirit winds out of Musquatchies. We unfortunately have lost uh, too many of our students to, to suicide, and that was something that was really powerful for our staff. Um, we also have access to Joseph, who's been amazing, and Sheila, and they're in our building uh, at least twice a week. Uh, we use the Moodle quite a lot um, that I know Solange has helped develop. And our, our staff, we do, uh, and I know Shelia will speak to this later, we have site-based um, modules that we create. All of our, our work is um, done in modules. And so we're integrating First Nations content into those. And that is a great way for our staff to build educator capacity just in the learning that goes on with that. Um, I've got a 20 second little video here from one of our teachers, John McEachern. He is uh, in our English department. There's two videos on there and when this gets shared out, you're welcome to watch. The other one, maybe it's not going to work. Okay, well both videos you can look at later. <laughs> uh, we also have um, dug a little deeper into the medicine wheel and uh, done some work with Joseph there and uh, developed an electronic version that fits the, the Cree culture uh, that we've integrated into our modules as well. The next area of focus for us is engaging learners. We felt if we developed the capacity, then we could engage learners. And I'm just going to invite Leanne Lewis. She is a member of our Wisdom and Guidance Committee, a parent in our Wolf Creek Public School. Good morning. Thank you. I've been working with Sheila and um, the committee since Sheila started as our FMNI Student Success Coordinator. And personally, I believe we cannot have a better person for that position within the school, Wolf, Wolf Creek School Division. And I'm really happy Sheila is there with us as well, my, my brother Joey. The staff at the Wolf Creek head office, so fortunate for all their support, and especially the teaching staff and all the supports within the schools helping our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students. It's been quite a journey. It's been a wonderful over two years spending monthly meetings with Sheila and the group. One of the first things that we wanted to hear from was our students. We needed to know what they were thinking attending an off-reserve school. I went to off-reserve school from grade five and graduated from Pinoca in a long time ago. Um, but I did a uh, majority of my school off reserve and it was quite the struggle. So I'm really happy with the steps that Wolf Creek has done in the last couple of years and the headstones that we've reached to this point. But um, our gathering we had a year ago, um, we called it Nitohtoen Gathering. Nitohtoen is a Cree word for listen to me. And we wanted to hear right directly from our students. So Sheila gathered the kids and we set aside a day, spent the day with them. Uh, while we were planning, we wanted to highlight a few areas. Um, we separated the kids into four classrooms into different groups. We looked at the physical, the mental, the spiritual, and the emotional aspects. And in each of the rooms, we wanted it to be safe. We wanted to hear directly from our kids, and we didn't want them to hold anything back. So the, we had the social workers in there and uh, someone that they were comfortable with. And on the emotional side, we had like the elder there some counselors in so you know in case it got emotional we wanted the supports there for our students but it was a really wonderful day the feedback that we got from the students was amazing this is something that we're working with on a monthly basis when we meet as a group and looking at what the kids had felt what they're feeling now and then working towards um, a better education for first nation students within wolf creek school district 
we finished off the day with a traditional feast ceremony, and then we had a little powwow demonstration as well. So it was a really eventful, stressful, busy day that day. So yeah, it was, it was really successful. What we got from the students, their feedback, Sheila has a report on that. So I just wanted to thank, I guess, everybody from Wolf Creek School Division for all their support and continue working well together. So I wish you guys all a good day and safe travels when you head back tomorrow. Thank you. So in terms of student engagement and teaching and learning, one of our key things that I'll highlight, because our time is slipping away, is our synergized time that we have on Fridays when we have students. Last year we just had Muslim time and our First Nation Métis Inuit students could bring a friend if they wanted, but it was focused on our First Nation students. This year we've implemented Synergize, which together is better, and it's a time when all of our students can be exposed to the culture. And it's been very successful, so much that a number of our students are wanting to self-identify. One little girl said, I'm one-sixth First Nations. <laughs> so during Synergize time, we have Sheila and our Muslim Joey attend, and they get about 15 minutes, um, all of our students in the school, um, in different groupings, um, to go through Synergize. And during that time, they're, like I said, exposed to the culture. They might look at artifacts. They, we've had drummers in. They played hand games. They've looked at local heroes who are First Nations. And it's just a really neat time for our students. Hi. All right. I just want to highlight, like, probably mostly the relationship focus. When we are looking to engage our students, we have a lot of at-risk youth students at the Pinocchio Outreach School. So first and foremost is we build a relationship with them. We're not going to get much further into our modules if we don't have that. So we do that. Um, we do that by doing things like everything you see there. <laughs> and the other one I want to highlight um, is our cultural room, which we do a lot of cultural stuff in that room, but it bleeds out into the whole school helps build up that relationship. Um, Joseph Joey's in there sometimes. We have men's group, we have a grief group. Lots of different activities in there. Um, and it all then ties into the modules, which is where the learning happens. And we integrate, like Erin was talking about, um, things that are really engaging to the students. Pinocchio Secondary Campus again. So we, in, in trying to engage our First Nations students we just try to get them working on things that interest them like you would with any other students so we did the blanket activity you can see up there talking circles we i teach math so i did some specific things to math that are very hands-on and you can see their reconcile action that is a term that Sheila told me is a word but then when I went to look I don't actually think it is <laughs> we're doing a lot of work with our grade sevens there and they have some really really great ideas creating paths for success I will call up Leonard actually are you he's gonna speak Good morning. My name is Leonard Stanley Honorotan from Muskegee, from the Montana First Nations. I never went to school in Pinocchio, but uh, I live in Pinocchio now because uh, I have a daughter that goes to high school. And I got involved in the parent council to start with. And I just happened to be in getting involved at the right time, I guess. And uh, I got recruited to it uh, for this. Wisdom and Guidance Committee. I didn't know what it was all about, but I just jumped in and uh, three years had passed on and uh, I'm not directly involved with the school on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I meet with a group uh, monthly and they give the reports, but so far it's been a, a success and a lot of the students are really getting involved and they're really liking it because I, I know I get the feedback from my daughter when she comes home. So it's been a real learning experience for me because I, I really feel that uh, we need to support our students when it comes to education because uh, we never had that when uh, I was going to school. 
So, <clears throat> and I really like to thank Sheila and her group for getting us involved in, and I'm hoping that uh, it'll continue as long as it, 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 we keep doing this and it'll be a success. Thank you. So in creating pathways, one of the things that we've noticed is more and more of our families joining us for school activities, and whether they be for um, school, being resource people in our school or attending school events. <laughs> Only. Uh, we have two main things here. Uh, we're in the second year of a new registration process in which we have one-on-one -on -one interviews with every single family in our school and that has been phenomenal and we've got to meet every parent and had a lot of First Nations parents come in that we never ever used to see for three or four years. So that's been great and our school also uses Twitter a lot so I just went back and uh, if we had time, if you do click on there, it shows our last two weeks of Twitter, and there's probably eight different uh, tweets about specific things that we did with our First Nations kids. Uh, and again, at Pinoka Outreach, I'm just gonna highlight two, maybe three things on there. We just moved into a new school this year, so Joseph, we had a calling of the spirit ceremony for our new school, which was pretty powerful. The last few years, we've done a round dance at our graduation ceremonies, which has been amazing for not only our First Nations graduates, but also our non-First Nations graduates and their families and everybody that's there does the dance. And for we were trying to count. Over the last 10 plus years, we've gone out to Muskogee's ourselves to do parent-teacher interviews instead of having them come into Pinoka for our schools. We do a one-night interview out there, which has been great to get our parents involved. I put a quote up there, but our greatest learning opportunities really come from our students. If you want to know what we need to do better in the classroom, then you ask the students what needs to happen and they share that with you. It's been very powerful for us. We're running out of time, so I'm going to let Amber and Jason speak. Good morning, I'm Amber Hester, Assistant Superintendent with Inclusive Learning. Um, my main role up here today is to acknowledge, um, acknowledge the great work that this whole team behind us has done. Half an hour doesn't do justice to the amount of work that has been, been taking place in our school division and we have to specifically acknowledge Joseph, our elder, Sheila does a fantastic job, but at the front line we've got principals, teachers, EAs, and our community. And I'm going to let Jason talk about our community, but we are truly proud of the work that Solange has done to support our, our school division and this has been a fantastic journey for us to being a part of this project. Jason, I'll leave the last words for you. Thank you, Amber. Good morning. My name is Jason Lovell. I'm the Acting Superintendent with Wolf Creek. Uh, just, I'd like to acknowledge uh, what I believe is the most powerful and the most impactful uh, source for us to move forward, and that's our parents who have been instrumental in helping us understand and gain insights and really create a bridge between our community and the First Nations community. Uh, their insights, their wisdom, uh, their sense of humor, uh, the way that they try to help us engage our communities and understand uh, the things that are important for us as educators to ensure that our students are being successful. It's truly been an amazing experience and I, I think we just owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to our parents who have supported. So thank you very much on behalf of the school division and uh, we look forward to continuing that relationship and uh, taking our next steps beyond this year. Thank you.